this week with irishracing.com, I'm going to be doing a different kind of a tour. We're actually heading to the racing academy in County Kildare. Paddy Flood has kindly agreed to show me around and give me a look at how the trainees are progressing at this stage of their course. I think they're about a third into it at this stage. We're going to get to see some schooling over fences. We'll see a, a demo on the simulator and just hopefully get a chat with some of the youngsters and how they're finding the course so far. There'll probably be a few stars of the future among the class, so it'll be an interesting one. So Paddy, thanks very much for having me down here today. Um, you're working here in race now a couple of years, you were telling me? Yeah, here about five years now, am I? Yeah. Are you enjoying the new world, sw switching from riding? Yeah, it's different, very different. I uh, suppose you need to uh, start focusing on others rather than yourself. Um, probably struggled a little bit with coaching and explaining how to do things or how you rode horses. Uh, it took me a while to kind of, uh, how would you say, just project that to others rather than just thinking it in your head. But no, it's, it's a challenge, but it's a good challenge, yeah. And you're kept busy here with the trainees. Um, what, what's, your, what's your role with the, them? You're kind of managing the barn, you were telling me. Yeah, exactly. There's five of us here in the barn. We've got uh, 44 horses here at the minute, 30 students. So it uh, takes a bit of running. Um, I suppose our main goal is to produce uh, staff for the industry, which we know is badly needed. Um, and hopefully we can produce a couple of jockeys out of that too. And the kids that are coming here, kind of 15, 16 years old, what kind of experience would they have coming in the door? You'd have a mix. You'd have some here that have never rode a horse, and you'd have some who have done a bit of show jumping and eventing, and then you'd have lads who have been in yards and have a little bit more experience. And them guys tend to get on placement to trainers' yards a little bit quicker, the more experienced ones. But we do a, we do a lot of work with them here before we get them to a yard. Um, there's a group of 15 gone out already. They were here for 12 weeks and then went out to trainers' yards. So we were happy with their mucking out standard, their riding standard, and you know all around ability to, to go to yards, to trainers' yards. And like you were saying there, it's kind of more, more not just about the riding, it's kind of more involved in it. They go to school in the evenings and they have to learn to muck out and work in the yard. And is that kind of the hardest thing to maybe ingrain in them that they're not just here to ride the horses? Exactly, yeah. And education is a, is a big thing, you know, because in our day it was, try to get out of school as quick as possible and horses was the be all and end all but you know the world is changing you need a little bit of backup now and they get it all here in the academy they get um school in the afternoons horse care in the mornings um as i said we're, we're trying our best to turn out jockeys but we also want to just turn out really good standard you know yard people whether it be stud or a racing yard but just people for the industry basically and you, as you mentioned, a few have gone out in placement already. How do you decide who goes to which yard? Is the trainers put themselves forward? I suppose I'm in a, in a lucky position that I probably know a lot of the trainers personally on the Curra and around. And you get a feel for the kids after 12 weeks or that, that whose personality might work with whom. And, you know, some yards mightn't have an apprentice there. And you might be looking, maybe there's a little chance for a good rider. And then you'd be looking at, you know, other, other trainers who... Some of the trainees might just need a little bit of time and patience and, and care and uh, we're lucky enough to have some great people on the Curra who will take them, yeah. And you were mentioning to me there before we came on camera that you've actually um, put the trainees forward, they can actually sign on now while they're in the school. Is that that's kind of a new aspect to the course, is it? Yeah, I don't think anyone has ever done it, to be honest. Uh, we were lucky enough last year that the day they graduated, the next day two or three kids had signed on and two of them had rode their first ride rode winners, you know, one for uh, Jesse Harrington and one for Dermot Weld. And um, yeah, it was great. So we're aiming that way, you know, that uh, you're in a school and we've all the facilities here to, to, if you have the ability to make you a jockey, you know. And even outside the trainee jockey course, there's a lot of other things offered here. I think you do jockey coaching and the trainers course obviously happens here and riders get sent here as well for um, whip schooling now. So you're, you're kept busy every day. Kept busy, yeah. So we'll, 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 do, uh, we'll do a lot of work with the IHRB, you know, as in assessments for trainers, amateur jockeys, conditionals, apprentices, um, schooling courses. We run a lot of them during the year. Um, so we're pretty much busy all year round, you know. 
Uh, our horse will get a little break now for the Christmas. And um, yeah, but they're kept busy, but they're in good nick. So we'll get a look here at them schooling and maybe look at the simulators as well and see, see how it's going so far, about three months into the course. Yeah. Jog away there. Terry, I should ride a bit shorter now over fences. You should ride a bit shorter as well, yeah. I'm just going to send them all down over a hurdle now and see what happens in a minute. They won't know I'm doing it, but <laughs> we'll see. Next time we're going to jump in the hurdle, all right? Spread out a little bit. Go and jump in next time. Go and jump in the hurdle next. Right out to the outside. Out to the outside now. Outside, outside, outside. April, wake up. Right rain. Do you know what them yokes in your hands are for? Yeah, maybe you use them. Right, get in behind Finn here. You're all going again, over hurdles and fences there. Just whatever way you are now, that'll do you. All right? Good. Right, Finn, when, just wait till they're all kind of gone. All right, Finn, that'll do you. All right, just let them roll away down now, Terry. All right, go on, give them a squeeze. Good. Just let them roll away, roll away, soften your hands. Good. That's old Bay Hill in front, Park Roach's old horse. Joe, give him a ride. You're asleep. Go on, lads, go on. What are you looking for then when they're schooling? Ah, uh, you're just ho hoping they can see an old stride and sit into the horse and sit nice and tight, you know. Um, these horses are very good. Some of them can wing, some of them can chip in. Horses are very fast, but you just want to see them um, approaching the fence nice and comfortable, not panicking, sitting into the saddle, letting their horse jump. I mean, as I said, all the horses are very good. But my kind of motto here this year is if they can ride a horse down to a fence and can control them and sit with them, that they should be able to ride a yearling, you know. And, um, and what's the kind of split then? Would many go to be jump jockeys from here, do you think? I suppose the way it will tell. Uh, the lads are getting bigger. Um, you know, we've very few there that probably stay on the flat, but they might get a year or two out of flat, you know. Um, so yeah, it's I good. suppose, yeah, coming here then, they probably wouldn't have any school and done a lot of them. Like, uh, yeah, a lot of them wouldn't, a lot of them they, wouldn't. Uh, um, as I said, the horses are very good. As long as you, the guys are willing to learn and, and they're happy enough to go jumping, we do a lot of jumping. Yeah, how know? long would it take them to get them to school and then from when, from when they start? Oh, sure, look, it'd be probably the second weekend I started them and you kind of find your riders from then, you know, you find what sort of um, what sort of ability they have basically and how hard you can actually push them and um, where their limits are and then a lot of them will stand up to it and some of them won't, they'll shrink away and they need a little bit slower time of it. Um, but all these riders here are all out in yards now, so they're, they're good riders and hopefully we can have a future star in, in them somewhere. You give them a good test of the bottle, so. Good test of the <laughs> bottle and sure, look, if, if, if you can't ride a horse in an indoor there, you know, you won't be going around the race, so uh, just getting them used to jumping and uh, just horses acting differently, and, and it's, it's very good for their seat and very good for their hands. We had an old pal of mine here, Chosen Hour. He's, he was donated to you in the last six months, you were telling me? He was, yeah. He came from uh, Havana McCutcheon. Um, lovely big horse, yeah. Uh, schools away over fences, hurdles, and he's, he's a quiet horse as well, so he's ideal, yeah. And all the horses are donated from yards, maybe, when they're finished their racing, is that, is that the way it goes? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, they get donated, they have a great life here, you know, they've, they've got the best of everything. Um, new bed every morning and plenty of feed. Um, so yeah, we take them in, we take them for a month's trial, um, just to see their suitability, what sort of standard they're at. We've got plenty of strong horses here. We've got plenty of horses to jump well. We've also got nice middle of the road horse, and we've also got probably two or three really quiet ones that anybody could ride. So we've a nice mix, but it's uh, we've 44 of them at the minute, so we're pretty much full. But uh, yeah, we're always looking for that right type of horse. Yeah. And when you're getting them in, I suppose at the start of the year when the kids don't have much experience, is it hard to keep them maybe quiet enough? But, you know, they are thoroughbreds. Is it hard to get the right ones to match the jockeys sometimes? It is, yeah. But you still need your strong horses to go on school over fences because, as I said, we've plenty of courses running here that 
you know, the likes of Derek O'Connor comes in those schooling days here. So it would be quite hard on a horse that if they haven't got a whole lot of ability. But uh, a good big horse that jumps fences maybe all their lives. We're always looking for that sort of horse. But uh, we also do a lot of stalls work and stuff like that. So we have flat horses here as well. Um, but 99% of them jump here. Yeah, we saw them schooling inside there. They were loving it. They keep them sweet as well in their old age. Yeah, they do. They love it. They had done a lot of schooling there for a couple of weeks, but they haven't done as much lately, so they're fresh. So, yeah, it, it, they thrive on it. So, Alan Nashing, you're here. Uh, your first year of the course. About three, three or four months in now, how are you finding it? Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Did you have much experience coming into it? Um, I had a little bit of experience, but not much with racing. I was only riding out for about a month. And then I came on the trial. And I didn't expect much from it, but then I got offered a place and came in September, halfway through. Sure, it's going good now. <laughs> You're enjoying it so far, aren't you? Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Learning loads so far. How you came here with a bit of experience, I suppose, so yeah. you were you kind of had something to start on anyway. Yeah, I had something, but it's a lot of bad habits, and you don't even realise it then until you have the likes of Paddy and Stefan in the barn telling you all your bad habits. And I was really bad. I was always one to be down on my knees. I had my knees turned in. <laughs> And it took a lot of practice, but I think I'm getting out the habit now. <laughs> What's your favourite part about the course? Do you like the schooling or more on the flat? Um, I think I'm more of a flat person myself, but it's always nice to get over the jumps and get a bit of a different look at everything. And It's nice, even if you don't think you're going to do it, it's nice to get a bit of change up in here. And do you have a goal kind of long term? Do you have someone you're here or you want to be like, maybe Rachel Blackmore or someone like that? <laughs> but yeah, that's the dream. But, you know, everyone wants to be Rachel but I don't think everyone's gonna get to be like <laughs> Rachel but I suppose it's just getting out there and take your time try your best and see where you end up. Brilliant and Alan you're, you came in here did you have much experience coming? Yeah, my father has a few horses so it's riding them. So you're well used to the working in the yard? Ah yeah. <laughs> and are you enjoying the course so far? Ah yeah it's good. What's your fa favourite part of it? Ah, riding them out. Riding them out and you, you like the schooling? Yeah I do. Getting used to it don't I? And you, what's, your, what's your dream, maybe, in five years' time, where do you see yourself? Riding races in the Riding races, jumps or flat? Flat. Flat jockey. <laughs> right, best of luck. I'm sure we'll hear plenty of Zuby.